Today's video is sponsored by G Gable Radio. Follow their link in the description below and you'll find some of my favorite amateur radio portable antennas and gear. And thanks to Lead Time for providing a mini edition of their 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. To show up on the HOA ham channel, there has to be something special about your battery. What do I mean by that? And what is special about this battery? I have the good fortune of having way more people asking me to do reviews than I possibly have time to do. So I've been very selective with my battery reviews, only those that have a great reputation. And then there must be a reason why I'm talking about the battery. We'll talk about that reason here in a moment. We need all those YouTubers and those companies out there bringing to market brands that we're not yet familiar with, or maybe that haven't gained traction mainstream or are slowly growing. And why do we need them? Well, we need those reviews so we know whether or not a budget price to battery is worth our investment, even if it is budget. Does it have the rated capacity? Is it good quality? Is it good for us to invest in it and help that company grow? And that's really the second thing. The thing that's driven the pricing down on LifePo 4 batteries is all the competition. So people like Lead Time, as much as we like and respect them and view them as a quality manufacturer of LifePo 4 batteries, somebody's nipping at their heels and that keeps the competitiveness going. That's good for us all. With this particular battery, what we get in addition to the battery itself is a carry handle, the studs that go down into the receptacles. We get uh, these plastic little gizmos that are covering the receptacles before we put the studs in. And then we get caps. So once we use the battery that um, we're done with it, we can put it away for storage and, or we don't have it connected to any gear, we can put these caps on. Let's get those oriented correctly, right? Negative, positive, and you can see that in the construction itself, they've included, I'm going to guess that's some type of epoxy resin, that it's black on the negative side and red on the positive side. So even if we don't have these caps on, we know what's positive and what's negative. That's a great thing. It comes with excellent documentation, which is typical of lead time. I'm not going to go through the product manual, but you must. If you're going to use a lithium iron phosphate battery, you really need to understand how to connect these to your gear. You need to understand how to connect them in parallel or in series. You need to understand the proper usage of these batteries, how to charge them and how to discharge them. That is completely on you to make sure that you're operating safe and this small manual helps you to do that. Why this battery? The carry strap is convenient, but we're going to take that off before we flip it over on its side and get a look at the mininess, meaning the size of this. I think the strap is actually an opportunity for an improvement down the road as the manufacturers continue to be able to make these batteries more small. But I think this is here because to integrate a handle here in the top would take away from the mini option. And that's what this battery has. Uh, that makes it a reason to be on my channel and quite frankly makes it as a possible reason to be in your arsenal from a tools perspective. LifePo 4 batteries today, you should always be asking yourself a question, how am I going to use it? What do I need? If a group 24 size battery is all you need, if you can use something that has cylindrical cells and therefore size isn't important, it fits in the envelope, you're going to pay a little bit less for it. If you need something that's as minimal as possible and it's using, uh, I think these are called pouch cells, to get that small size, you have to pay for some of the more modern technology, the more expensive technology, because typically in electronics, reduced size usually results in increased cost. Maybe you need some Bluetooth connectivity. Figure out what it is that you need in a LifePo 4 battery in the 100 amp hour spectrum, and that's where you're going to put your money. You're going to put your money here if small size is what you need, because that's the reason for this battery to exist. Just how small is it? Well, you may not be able to tell from the camera angle, but it's kind of tapered. This band across the top, all the way around, that connects the top piece to the bottom piece. Our pouches, our cells are down in here, you know, and the smarts, the, uh, the brains of the, the unit are up here. And so this is where the connectivity is. And if we stripped this top off, which I'm not going to do on my channel, we would pull this off. We would see the BMS right here in the top, the connection to the posts. And then we would go down inside and we would see the cells. So this right here is the largest part of the battery. How big is 
this battery. It's just under 10 and a quarter wide. You get to the bottom and it's like mm, nine and seven eighths. So you get the idea it's largest here, right around this band. How wide is the battery? Same scenario right here. It's just under five and a quarter. And at the bottom, it's more like five and mm, 15 sixteenths, just under uh, four and 15 sixteenths, four and seven eighths. Whereas up here, it's almost five and a quarter. What's the last thing that we need to do is get a measurement in this direction. Forget the posts because without the posts, it's uh, a little bit shorter. And we're at eight and seven eighths with the posts. We're at uh, nine and three eighths. So eight and seven eighths just for the battery itself and nine and three eighths with the posts. So this is as small of a 100 amp hour LifePo4 battery that you're going to be able to get today. The reason for this to exist, the reason for this to make it to your shack, the reason for this to be in your portable uh, setup would be size. It is as small as you can go and that's its reason for existing. Because it's small, does that mean we've compromised on capacity? Let's check that out next. Batteries like this typically come from manufacturers partially charged. So all I'm doing is confirming, yep, 13.17 volts. We need to top this off. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my charger, get it completely charged, let it rest 24 hours. And then tomorrow we're going to go ahead and put this on our analyzer and confirm that mini in size does not mean mini in output. Will it get us to the full rated output? I'm sure it will. I use these alligator clips that I picked up from Amazon. It comes with the cable and it comes with a 50 amp power pole connector. So this is really convenient to attach it to things like this uh, CBA5. This is a West Mountain radio computerized battery analyzer. One of the best you can get. And based on the amount of discharge that I'm going to run through this analyzer, 10 amps, it's going to take us more than 10 hours to complete the test. So what do you want to talk about for the next 10 hours? How about the fact that we want to talk about the different offerings from lead time? If you're watching this video, it's likely that you're familiar with the main competitors in this particular market. And this is about the smallest battery you're going to get in 100 amp hour capacity. There might be an outlier out there with one of the newer manufacturers, or I should say new to market manufacturers, but of the well-established reputable manufacturers, this is as small as you're going to get as of the airing of this video. So if that's your use case, this is the battery for you. If you need Bluetooth connectivity, then that would be an alternate battery. You need 200 amp hours, a different battery. And again, the chart that we have here in front of us helps us to make those decisions. As far as what the battery can do and how it protects you, it has all the overs. The BMS will protect you from over voltage, under voltage, overheating, overcurrent, short circuits. So these are very smart uh, devices that we have in our possession today. And again, refer back to the user's manual because it will tell you how to properly use and safely use this battery. Of course, for me, you know what I like to do. I like to uh, operate amateur radio and why not have a small battery for my small radio? Of course, this battery, it will work with uh, the 100 uh, watt batteries, an IC705, uh, an FT991A, etc. But I have a 20 watt FX4CR. It's one of my favorite radios. But in addition to being able to power up my amateur radio devices, here's a use case that I always like you to know about as it relates to these 100 amp hour batteries. I'm a fan of the All Powers R600 because of size. It's very small. The review that I did on this on my channel really got very pragmatic. I showed you how to fry an egg, boil water, run a really small heater. This can't handle large, high capacity electronic devices, but for a couple of hours of power outage and you just need to get by a little bit, this is the way to go. The challenge is with these smaller units is they've got a small battery in them. That's the beauty of something like this 100 amp hour lead time battery. This does not know that this is not a solar panel. So if I take this XT60 uh, connector and I put it in the solar charge port of my R600, watch what happens. <laughs> Did you see that? It wakes up and it comes to life. I'm only at, well, I'm at 98%. It's showing my input at 46, 51, 
So 51 watts input, 98%. This battery right here, this R600 thinks this is a solar panel. So even if it were nighttime and I couldn't charge via solar to keep this topped off while I was using, you know, some small appliances, I can hook up my very small form factor, lead time, 100 amp hour, like before battery. This thinks it's a solar panel. It just keeps producing AC for me. This is DC. This is AC. This could do DC also. But while I'm connected here, my R600 thinks I have a solar panel connected it's going to use the full capacity of this 100 amp hour life po4 battery that's a great trick when you're trying to maximize your solar generator uh, your power station during a power outage or on a camping trip or you know some poda activation lead time battery knows how to make hoa ham happy send him some logo stickers to go on his logo wall check so we have a mini battery, mini in size. How about mini in capacity? The rated capacity is 100 amp hours. It comes in at 103.171. We met and exceeded the rated capacity. That is a pass. You do see a couple blips on my chart. I was moving the CBA5 around and the battery around on my workstation. Because remember, this is a 10 hour test, actually a little more than 10 hours. And that caused these little blips here. So that was all on me. When I don't touch my batteries, those blips don't show up on my graph. So that tells you how sensitive my testing equipment is, meaning it is highly precise, accurate. This is the brand of equipment that people like to use. So is there anything I would do different? Is there any recommendation I can make the lead time? Only if I get really nitpicky. So let's get nitpicky. So it's a mini battery and it comes with this webbing strap for a handle. It is sufficient. It gets the job done. It's strong. I don't like it because I like something else that I've seen on their group 24 size battery. There's an injection molded handle here that flips up and down. It it's just integrated. It's awesome. And when you're done with it, when you're not carrying, it just folds down to the top of the battery. Give us that here. Win, win, give us Bluetooth connectivity so we can look at the charge and discharge state and additional information on our battery. Win, win, win. So the only thing that lead time could really do is take all the awesome features of the complete line of batteries and add them into one, the mini, and they would have an absolute slam dunk. Nobody's doing that today. The first one to that finish line is going to sell a lot of batteries. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found it informative and helpful. I'll talk to you soon, friends. 73.